All right, mate, how's it going? In this video, we are gonna help you find your life purpose. We're gonna explore your life purpose. We're gonna help you find your authentic reason for being. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna talk about seven pretty weird questions that helped me personally find a sense of purpose. And these are questions that I come back to when I need a sense of direction and orientation. So I wanted to share them with you in this video, so hopefully they can help you do the same. Question one, who am I trying to please? How and why? One of the things that keeps us from our authentic purpose in life is trying to please unconsciously other people. Without really knowing it, we might have built a life around unconsciously trying to please our parents when we were younger. Maybe we were trying to please our teachers, like some super critical teachers at school. Maybe we were bullied and we're unconsciously trying to build a life that protects us from that because that part of us is still pretty wounded from that experience. In the amazing book, Finding Your North Star by Martha Beck, she talks about the two selves we have. We have the social self and the true self. The social self is the mask that we wear to the world to get acceptance, approval, to be accepted into the tribe. And the true self is the part of us that is the most authentic, that has a, a direction to go, that has a, a path that it wants to go down that would lead to a, the maximum growth in this life. And part of choosing and living from the true self is becoming aware of what the social self is up to and how it functions. Because up to this point, you have probably been living from your social self, but you've been identifying with it. You've not been actually aware that this is just a mask that you're, you're wearing. And maybe this is one of the reasons why you feel lost right now, because your true self is starting to burst through and your true self is not happy wearing this fucking mask anymore. So in a way, it's kind of a cause for celebration. Well, that's what you need to do is become aware of what your social self is up to, who it's trying to please. The second question is to ask yourself, what am I doing when I forget to eat? The things you're doing when you forget to eat are an indication of what you need to bring into your life a lot more because this stuff gives you a sense of flow. Flow is the feeling where you and the activity merge into one. And this is deeply enriching and fulfilling for human beings because it alleviates mental suffering. We forget the ego. We forget ourselves for the duration of us doing this activity. So for me, I love writing. I love DJing. I love punching the heavy bag and I love lifting weights. These things make me forget myself. The self is almost, the, the, the ego, the small self is almost always a burden. So by forgetting that and doing activities that allow you to forget that more and more often, then you are going to feel more of a sense of purpose in your life. Question three, who do I look up to and why? One of the aspects of building a life of purpose, a life that feels purposeful to you, is living in alignment with your values. The problem is, if I ask you what are your values, you might not fully know. It might be a bit of a difficult question. You might not feel an emotional resonance with the answer that you give me. But usually what I can ask then is, who do you look up to? Like list three role models and dive into it. Why do you look up to these people? Most of the time, it's because they exhibit, they embody values, traits, strengths, skills, etc., that you value. And what we can do is reverse engineer that and break it down and be like, what is it about this person that you value? Because this is likely a value you have that maybe you are not living by. Question four, if I look back on my life, do I see any themes or patterns that consistently emerge? One of the exercises that I give a new client for finding their life purpose is to write a personal timeline. This is where you break your life down into six stages, six phases of your life. You then write about three to six experiences that you had in each of these phases. It's very similar to the past authoring program that Jordan Peterson suggests. But what you can then do is once you've done this exercise, you can look back and just by doing this exercise, you will actually see that there are patterns here. There are things that keep coming up, activities, interests, curiosities, passions that maybe you've forgotten about that did keep coming up that for some reason you, you came off the path of, 
But when you look back and you see this, you can start to think, hang on a minute, I've not done that in a while. Hang on, that was important to me at some point. And this kind of like gets the, the light bulb going. For me, I've always been interested in martial arts. Bruce Lee is my number one role model. He was, when I was like three or four years old, I saw my first Bruce Lee movie somehow. And I just thought that guy is an absolute badass. The way he moves, the way he uses his body, his charisma, his philosophies even, was absolutely stunning to me. And I realized that as an adult, the less that I do some sort of martial art, for some reason, something in me does not like it. And for you, there'll be something similar there too. Question five, what scares me? The cave that we are not willing to enter holds the treasure that we seek. A solid chunk of the time, the thing, the purpose that we're looking for, lies in the area that we're afraid to go. When you're afraid of something, when you feel a, a fear, like, oh, I can't do that. Oh God, I'm not gonna survive if I start my own business. Oh God, if I commit to losing 20 pounds, oh my God, people are gonna think I'm this and that. If I don't, you know, I might not, I might not succeed or whatever. Whatever goal that you set yourself or whatever vision you have, if it brings up a fear in you, it's because you really care about it. It's because you care about it and it's because that path will lead to your growth, right? The reason you're afraid to say go in this direction is because it's an ego destroying process. Going in this direction means that you will transform, you will grow, you will find out more about yourself and what you're not. A lot of comfortable illusions and a lot of safety blankets, you will need to let go of them to achieve a goal, a really valued sort of goal that frightens you to achieve it means you need to become someone else completely. And if you're attached to that person that you've always been, then that's gonna be scary for you. But that's why I say courage is extremely important on this journey because if you have the courage to put one foot in front of the other and move towards the place that you're afraid of, then you will grow. You will feel the fulfillment and the purpose and the meaning that evades you right now. Question six, what do I want my life to look like one year from now? I used to make a mistake and that mistake was comparing myself to these amazing people like Sir Isaac Newton or Stephen Hawking or whatever and thinking these people had a life's work. If I look at their life from A to B, start to finish, they had a life's work. I don't seem to have a life's work. What's wrong with me? is what I used to think, until it dawned on me. That doesn't make any sense. To Stephen Hawking or Sir Isaac Newton, when they were just putting one foot in front of the other, living their lives, their story was being written in the moment. They probably couldn't see their life's work either. They were, probably weren't looking at it from that perspective of this is my life's work. They were just following their curiosities and their story was being written along the way. So in a sense, I was looking too broadly. I was looking at the, my life as a whole, and because I couldn't define a strict life's work, it made me feel very hopeless. So what I decided to do was break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down, until I got to the point where it's like, okay, maybe I don't know my life's work. Maybe I don't know my grand life purpose or my destiny or anything like that. But one thing I can answer is what I do want my next year to look like and what I don't want my next year to look like. And for me, one year worked for me personally, but you can, if you want to, you can say five years or 10 years even, if, if that's what you want. 10 years is often a good one, but for me, it was a year. And question number seven, what are my top three problems right now and how can I solve them? A lot of the time, your problem is not that you have a lack of purpose. The problem might be, you actually don't have much money in your bank account. You actually don't have an intimate relationship. You don't really have friends right now. You are spending your time doing things that don't fulfill you at all, like playing too many video games or, or whatever the case is, or browsing Reddit all the time. It might be the case that instead of purpose as being your main problem, some of your basic human needs for connection, etc., are not being met. If this applies to you, then you can make your purpose to solve the top one to three problems you have and for a time you can fix that problem and that will give you a sense of purpose. You can move kind of up the pyramid, Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, you can focus on getting the bottom sort of foundational needs met before considering your grand life purpose. 
If you want to find your life purpose in six weeks, I am being serious, if you give it six focused weeks, then I want you to click the link in the pinned comment on this video and check out the Man On Purpose program. It's a six week program designed to help you find your life purpose in six weeks, or you get your money back. <laughs> so check that out below. And I want you to check out this video next because if you'd like this video, then this video is really gonna help you um, find your life purpose as well. It's gonna give you a real, a real good sense for that. And other than that guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.